and welcome back. We are joined right now by the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education and Culture and Youth and Sports, Mr. Patrick Barber, to talk to us about you know what's happening in the ministry and to give us an update about everything happening there. Welcome, Minister. Thank, Thank you for being here. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. Um, um, Marlene. This, Marlene, this is, <laughs> the, I, I blame this on President-elect Trump uh, having me up so late. Uh, but good morning We're to all, all your viewers. Yeah, oh. uh, recovering from uh, something that was certainly not expected by most Belizeans. Uh, but congratulations to President-elect Trump. So, of course, uh, we are glad to have the opportunity to have you here to get the official uh, update from government. Uh, as to how things have been unfolding currently with the teachers. Now, I want to start off uh, by looking at one of the, the main issues, and that was uh, the decision to go ahead to meet with managing authorities to make decisions regarding the teachers and not with the union itself. Well, this is something, uh, Minister, that people, I think, uh, can be seen both ways. One, you wanted to be able to make progress, but secondly, ultimately, uh, the expectation would be that you would find some middle ground with the unions to be able to move ahead. Well, uh, you will recall that I uh, wrote a letter inviting the union to uh, sit and to discuss two issues. Firstly, how we would uh, progress together to pay the teachers who were uh, on strike. And I was clear that that meant for me um, utilizing the union's strike fund and uh, that fund being subsidized by government funds and then we were to talk about uh, support for uh, making up time. That meeting of course never happened and I believe it, it didn't happen merely because the, the president and apparently the other members of the Council of Management played a game. Uh, it, you know President Palacio indicated on his media uh, interviews that, in fact, it is normal for the 25 to come to the table. And I'll tell you that that is very, very untrue and very, very unfair uh, to, the, to the Ministry of Education to try to say that this is the way things have happened. Mm -hmm. I'll give a very simple example. He gave you a number of examples of times when, in fact, government engaged with the 25 members of the Council of Management. The best example I can think about, though, is the entire collective bargaining negotiation, which in fact not only dealt with an issue as small as paying teachers uh, when they w were on strike, it dealt with the entire uh, adjustment that the uh, teachers and the public servants were dealing with. It dealt with all the other issues that were public service issues and, and teacher issues at the time. And in those negotiations, you only had the president and the general secretary of the union. So, uh, uh, and then on the regular, whenever it is that the union engages with the ministry, we are, we are partners, so we always engage. It is never with the 25. It is with the president. It, with, it is with the general secretary. After Mr. Fraser left the position of general secretary, they would still bring him in. Maybe another member, the treasurer, I remember Mr. Williams or Ms. Guerra would come but never 25 and I sincerely thought and I still think that any meeting with the 25 if it is not the kind of uh, broad based sharing of information uh, is pointless if it is to negotiate and to come up with something and I was careful in my in my communication with the president to say to him listen uh, let's meet with the five and if he had said well I want to meet bringing the, set, the, the executive of the union, that would have been fine. But he said, no, 25, and he was not moving on that, or the council of management was not moving on that. But if I, I, I was saying in my, in my communication to them that uh, uh, if it is that after meeting with that five, you feel the need to go and consult with the wider council of management, then I understand that. So it's not that I was blocking out the council of management, just that I thought it wouldn't make much sense to sit down in a room a couple of people from the ministry and 25 uh, from the union and so that effort was frustrated and I left the door open for the union to come to the table and I the the length of time was up to the point of the submission Mr. Palacio has since accused me again falsely 
that I have moved the date of submission and therefore brought up the deadline to box out the union? Absolutely untrue. And you ask any general manager, uh, yesterday I met with the secondary managements and they uh, confirmed that indeed the normal time of submission is within the first week of the month. So that is an untruth that Mr. Palacio told. And in fact, I gave the union uh, as much opportunity as I could have as Minister of Education uh, for them to come and engage to talk about how we could seriously solve the issue of the payment of teachers. Beyond the, the uh, determination by the union to go ahead with the meeting with the 25 persons representing the Council of Management, which uh, could have also expedited coming to a resolution because everybody yeah. would have been present to hear and make a decision then. Did you open back up negotiations to be able to include them in this decision? Well, this, the, or the, was it when he made I, his I, media I don't announcements know that the 25 premise, only? I don't know that the premise that you just spoke on can be said to be true. You're saying that that would have expedited... It could have, the, I said. Well, let's look at the history of that. The Prime Minister met with the 25 of them, and what did they say to the PM afterwards? Well, uh, we now have to go back and meet among ourselves. And then they promised the Prime Minister an answer within hours. They turned that into, no, we have to go to the general membership to consult. That is how they, they play these games. Mm -hmm. The executive uh, could have met. We could have had some dialogue. Mm -hmm. But the other reason why the meeting did not happen, apart from the fact that they demanded the 25 people to come, is that the pronouncements made by Mr. Palacio uh, made it clear to me that we had nothing to meet about. If it is a right to you to say, let's talk about the strike fund. Let's mm -hmm. talk about paying the teachers using the strike fund. He didn't respond to me officially, but he said um, on the interviews with the media, the, the strike fund will not be used for that. Uh, this is after, uh, we're not confused about it. There was a resolution in the uh, 2012 convention in Orange Walk that instructed the executive of the union to make sure that that strike fund was changed to uh, be able to pay teachers. So mm -hmm. if we're talking about good governance, then Mr. Palacio slipped down terribly after leading for four years, not carrying out a mandate that was given by the, by the National Convention, the highest decision-making body in the union. And if we want to be fair, you want the government to practice good government, we take our whipping uh, and we, 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 we dealt with that issue. Why is it that they can't answer to the same? Why is it that there can be no discussion about the strike fund? He's saying that right up front, even before we meet. And then he accuses the government of not being uh, the body that should be engaging with uh, stakeholders to make up time. So if we're not going to talk about makeup time, if we're not going to talk about strike fund usage to pay the teachers, if, we're, if we, we have to take the 20, then I'm sorry, that's the position. Well, uh, okay. Minister, for the general public, it seems like this issue is, has indeed come to an impasse. What would you say would be some of your own, outside of your role as a minister, as, as, a, as, a, as a former teacher, as a, a Belizean citizen, what would be your recommendation to well, the union right at this stage? Well, it is late to have any such change. And I note the recent action of the union, which is to write to the Prime Minister to ask him to rescind the instructions or the, the memos uh, coming from the Ministry of Education. Um, but as I pointed out, the deadline for submission for payments uh, was the second of the month. I think for secondary schools, they're saying it is the fifth of the month. Mm -hmm. But for primary schools, it's the second. And any change now will mean that probably uh, nobody will get paid, and we certainly can't afford, uh, afford to do it that way. So uh, really, this is, in my opinion, a, a kind of fall along on the part of the union. I believe that um, the proposal that is now uh, approved actually by the, the main stakeholder groups. The union didn't come to the table, so I can't sit and wait uh, for them. Um, but as it relates to the managements, they have approved the, the recommendation. And so we are about to put into official effect that uh, proposal that the government put, which is to put six additional days onto the school's calendar and to compensate teachers for it. So. In a way, we see this as a, 
as a solution to several problems. Uh, persons who said, oh, pay the teachers and solve the problem, uh, don't realize that in fact paying the teachers would not have solved the problem as easily as they uh, put it. Uh, merely because there were many teachers, uh, much more than the union would have had you uh, think about at the time of the strike, who went diligently to work every day, who are saying it's not fair now that uh, teachers who did not go to work get paid and we uh, get the same pay with them. Uh, they are saying as well, if you're asking us to do these additional days, uh, what is it that you're going to do? Uh, are you going to pay us? Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, if we were to pay them, and you know that money was an issue from the start, mm -hmm. then in fact, um, we need to have uh, from within the same uh, pool those monies to pay both the teachers who were uh, on strike and those who were not on strike and who will be now required to make up the, the six additional days uh, via the change in the calendar. I don't want to miss the point where you said that the six days will be compensated for. Is that what you said? Absolutely, and um, I'm glad you, you, you're raising that point for me to clarify because um, Mr. Palacio says he's not clear whether we will uh, do the deductions, and I'll make that clear, we are doing the deductions, and um, we are going to compensate the teachers who uh, make up the, the six days additional to the school's calendar. Now, the issue, and I think a lot of people have looked at it through the lens of your own involvement uh, as a union member and as a past mm -hmm. teacher, and it is emotional. I think uh, excluding all facts from it, people uh, grapple trying to understand how these teachers, standing up for their country essentially, um, are not going to be paid for the time, even though, rightly so, at the time of the strike they said they were willing to take the sacrifice. Uh, I think people now see it more as a power struggle, and it does come off that way at times. Uh, that as the minister, as the head of the, of the education ministry, and uh, the union president, that you two don't seem like you can come to an agreement to even meet, and everyone else suffers the consequences. How do you respond to that? Understanding as well that you have taken those steps, you have walked in those shoes to leave school, risking your salary, and, and strike as well? Uh, no, ma'am, I did not. <laughs> and I keep trying to clarify that. At the time of the 2005 strike, I was an administrator, vice principal of ACC. I did not go on strike. I took my responsibility as an administrator seriously, and I was in fact present at school. When you saw the incident at UB, mm. I did not go with teachers who were on strike. I went to, to, to the University of Belize campus after I had done my duties at ACC and we had closed off for the day. This was in the afternoon at around 2 or 3 o'clock. And so I was not on strike. But to make so the point... So you don't support strike no, actions no, I'm not by teachers? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just making the point okay. that I was not on strike during that time. And in fact, uh, my salary was never in, in jeopardy. But I understand those who take that, take that position and in fact want to make the sacrifice. Uh, and this is why, if you, if you notice what it is we're proposing, it proposes a kind of fix to the situation for those teachers who were on strike. It doesn't give you back the full time, but six days with compensation is a good way, uh, a kind of compromise. And in fact, if the teachers would demand from the union that the union be accountable, we would be able to solve this problem. And, and so there, in my opinion, a kind of there is a kind of letting off the hook on the part of the the teachers with the union why is it that they can't be transparent with what is going on with that fund why is it that mr palacio can't be accountable uh, to the union especially but also to the nation about why is it he has not put into effect if he's saying the monies are not in the strike fund then why is it that you can't say why is it you've not executed remember the, the, the one of the demands was for the prime minister to put in place the 13th senator the, the legislation was passed through the House. Why is it not enacted? Well, the legislation for his, con for his entity, the union, was passed in 2012. Why is it that you have not done what you're supposed to do? The same kind of accountability must be brought. And until we can have that kind of discussion, then the blame for not getting uh, part of the salary uh, needs to be placed on the union. And there is, there is no 
uh, personal vendetta there. It's just accountability. Plus, the other thing, I have a responsibility to those people who were on the strike, but also to those people who were not on strike. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday in our meeting with the secondary principals, there were some principals who asked me, why is it that you don't give a bonus to those who were not on strike? Mm -hmm. And my response to that is, I'd really love to do that. N nobody's happier with the teachers who went to work than I am. But I have a responsibility as well to be fair. I don't want to be uh, punishing teachers, which is how the union puts it, nor do I want to be rewarding uh, teachers who did what was uh, what were, was required of them and so for us uh, the fix that we are proposing works well it compensates the teachers who uh, were at work for the work that they will do to make up and that can if they want to deem it a kind of bonus that's fine with me I don't consider it a bonus it is uh, payment for work that you're doing you are paid for the work that you did when you did not go on strike those who did go on strike will not be paid for those days and then when they do the additional days they will be paid for that that is fair i don't lean one way over the other if i were to Im impose my bias i would happily give uh, a bonus to those teachers and you know there's a lot of justification for that uh, the teachers did what they were supposed to do in terms of going to work but they will tell you immediately that uh, it was not regular work in fact, they had to bend backwards to do additional work, to take on additional number of students to do duties that they weren't uh, ordinarily uh, supposed to do. So they may well have an argument, but in an effort to try to be fair, quite contrary to what some people paint. Uh, I have said no, uh, we don't believe that a bonus should be given, so to speak. There are some managements who have said that they will try to do it on their own, a small uh, uh, gratuity to the teachers uh, from their school funds and so on and I can't interfere with that but it doesn't come from the government. You know Minister this seems like a Solomon situation with the splitting the baby in two and for the aggrieved mother the one whose child died it seems like the teachers who did go on strike they feel that you are far removed from their situation they feel like you aren't understanding them what would be a message or your personal message to them to, to let them know that you do have their best interests at heart being the Minister of Education? Well, I have, I have their interests at heart, but I will ask them to understand as well that I do have the, have to have the interest of the students at heart, and I also have to have the interest of those teachers who did not go to strike at heart. I need to have the interest of the parents at heart so my uh, obligation is to many stakeholders and while I might be sympathetic it is just as I described just now uh, my obvious sympathy for those teachers who did go to work I cannot uh, act solely on their part I need to be uh, fair and that's what I try to do um, in fact to s I point out to people that um, the 180 contact days that is required by the law is uh, the tool that we're using to add the six days. Mm -hmm. Government could have said, you know what? The law requires 180 days. If you minus the 11 days uh, from the school's calendar that the strike action took, it would bring us below 180 days. We are requiring these additional days, no pay. Huh? But that's not what the government is doing. We're proposing to pay. And so there is a lot of uh, that kind of goodwill in the, in the offer that we're making. And the other thing is that we have to, like I said, we have to be concerned about the students. Uh, make up time that uh, comes by way of slapping on a half hour in the morning, a half hour in the evening, uh, coming to a one hour or two hour such as a class or something like that, does not work. We've seen it repeatedly. That kind of make up time is not effective. And so the manner in which we've, we're, we're doing it uh, really, uh, I think, gets us the best opportunity to make up whatever time has been lost. In addition to that, another kind of goodwill measure for all who are involved, uh, all teachers, I should say, is that we're proposing to give the 
payment for those additional days, at least the first four days, which will come in January. Uh, at the end of January, when everybody is going to need additional monies, whether you are paid or not paid as a result of the strike, uh, those monies will come in handy. Uh, for every working person, January is what we call MAGA season. And uh, while it is that that work will be done within the same week of submission and really should not be uh, submitted until the start of February, we're going to do our best to get it done uh, for the pay period that ends um, at the end of January. How comfortable are you making this decision, understanding that it is a very unpopular choice at this point in time? You see, that's a question again that's loaded. I don't know that it is unpopular. Well, it is said, unpopular with those teachers yes. who let's, went on strike. Of course. It might not be unpopular for those parents who had to bear the burden. It, it's not unpopular for those teachers who uh, remained in the classroom. It's not unpopular for Minister, many of okay, the let administrators. Me, let, me, let me take a break here, right? You are a politician. Yes, I am. And politicians understand the lessons learned from the power of the people. We saw the numbers of teachers who came out to strike. We saw them extend their strike day by day by day until not all, but most of their demands were met. They were successful in their strike. The 13th senator was implemented. The UNCAC will be signed. The adjustments were sorted through. Several of the eight points Indeed. were met. It shows that even your government understood that there was a power, a momentum by the everyday Belizean to be able to have these things done. So I'm saying, if we are to look at the number of people who came out, the momentum that was started, it's the power of the people. You, and I would then say that that means those people who supported the teachers, those who came out to strike, would view this as a very unpopular choice. I, I, I very much disagree with you. There are people who would look at all that has happened and said, fine, in fact, even me, I will tell you that I support uh, the ex to the extent that teachers felt they had a, a need and a right to go out there to do what they did, that in fact, and, and you can check every forum that I've spoken in. I have said that I believe that all was not right in the government and in fact much was achieved by what the teachers did. No qualms there. There are people out there, parents out there who kept their children home who would, would say, you know what, uh, indeed this needed to have been done, but who will not agree now with paying the teachers. If there was a sacrifice being made, they will tell you, then let the sacrifice roll through. You know, that is the position of many. And there are, there are people who, uh, you see, paying the teachers does not satisfy everybody. And that's the point I, I, I keep trying to make. There are going to be people on the other side who, if I make that decision, will then uh, have a problem and have a big problem. And contrary to what uh, the union would have you believe, there are a significant number of teachers who went, I, I am waiting desperately for the for the statistics to come out to, to, to bear me well, out I was to show going you to that, say that are, Because we've heard it from both sides yeah. until we can see the numbers of teachers who reported to school and those who didn't, then we know for sure. Classes stayed in session. Well, the fact that classes did not stay in session on, in some schools was a con on account of uh, some of the uh, students not attending. There were, mm -hmm. there were many cases where they had a good complement of teachers, but the students did no not students. turn up. There was uncertainty out there in the wider population. There were some people who kept their children home, not because they supported the strike, but because they genuinely had concerns about safety. All of these are factors. And so that is why I had an issue with what you proclaim to be a popular uh, position, when in fact, there are many factors that could have caused those uh, positions to be taken by people, not because they necessarily are jumping up for joy that these things are happening. But so I will not discount the fact that uh, a lot of good has come out of the demands uh, mm -hmm. when it is that we are fighting for good government and accountability uh, that can never be overlooked and and so I, I, I do uh, salute those outcomes. On a final note, uh, it isn't quite over as yet given the fact that the BNTU is written to the Prime Minister. Have you had any communication uh, with the Prime Minister regarding the impasse that you had with the BNTU in getting to a resolution? Um. Well, since the letter has been written, no. 
-hmm. But let me tell you and the nation that um, while it is that I am the minister with this responsibility, that I don't make these decisions on my own. I try to consult as, as, as much as I can. And that means consultation with the senior management of my, of my ministry. Okay. It also means consultations with uh, stakeholders, some of it mostly informal. Um, it does mean serious consultation with my boss, the prime minister, and my cabinet colleagues. So when it is we make these decisions, it's not in isolation. And so I can tell you that my position is of the same mind uh, as, as the prime minister. If the BNTU's letter is going to somehow make a change in his position and the cabinet's position, then uh, that would be new to me. Okay. Well, we thank you for joining us this morning for providing the official update from the ministry on the situation. As you pointed out, the deductions uh, will be taken out at the end of this month. Let me just share the, the dates before I leave, Marlene, right. because I think that is important. Um, we are pro proposing, and it will be made official uh, at some point today, I believe, uh, the chief will issue a memorandum amending the, uh, the calendar, the school, for this year. the school calendar. And we're proposing that school now reopens on January 3rd as opposed to January 9th. Mm -hmm. So it will open on a Tuesday and we will uh, be getting the days of the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th. That's Tuesday the 3rd, Wednesday the 4th, Thursday the 5th, Friday the 6th. And those four additional days will uh, be four of the six days. The other two days will be added on in April and that gives the benefit uh, for the PSE students, those days will be the, the first two days of the Easter holiday, the, two, the Monday and the Tuesday before Good Friday, and uh, those two days will make up the, the latter part of the six days. So uh, those days are now on the calendar. And in continuation, uh, we can say that you have said the teachers will be compensated for those extra days. And uh, that is where we are as of today. But thank Indeed. you so much thank for joining thank us you for having and me. being able to explain it. Sure. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, it's to have a conversation with the University of the West Indies on their country conference 2016. So stay tuned.